Hello and welcome. My name is Inge Patsch and welcome to the Complexity Thinking series. Today I want to explore with you what, are, what is the adaptive cycle, what does locked in mean and what is the illusion of linearity. The adaptive cycle is a loop developed by Gunderson and Holling who are basically coming from natural sciences so they have developed this loop um, based on their observation in the forest but as many complexity researchers and thinkers have found we can also apply this loop with certain limitations but in general we can say we can apply this loop also to social systems so what are the elements of this loop down as it's a loop we can start anywhere from reading it so um, let's say there is a system which is just has been breaking down let's say there was a bush fire in a forest um, and it destroyed the whole forest or a political revolution and it basically broke down the system as it was. So there is a breakdown of the old structure, energy is released, material is released which was bound before to certain uh, individuals or species and now this is released. And then slowly, it's a bit a chaotic situation, and slowly there will be a breakthrough of new, new species, new trees will start to grow, new leaders will emerge on the political scene, and slowly the system is getting reorganized. Um, so trees grow, species uh, develop their connection with each other, we will talk a bit more about this a bit later, and then slowly the, the forest is growing again, is gaining stability, there is a pattern, there are like um, the same, there are processes coming time and again and it looks like a very stable um, period and eventually this uh, stability will become um, more conserved and more conserved so there will be less amount of processes going on in the system until eventually it might again suffer a breakdown. In the top right corner, just before the breakdown, uh, a system like this could face a locked-in situation where it seems like that no change is possible at all anymore. Um, yeah, and we'll talk a bit later on how uh, such a locking can happen and uh, what will happen to the breakdown. I think the main key here is that saying in, in nature it's not in a way that a tree or a forest or any kind of ecosystem uh, be it marine or be it land ecosystem is ever stable but is permanent subject to change and there is a lot there is a cycle which is going on time and again. So let's have a look at the few stages of this cycle a bit more uh, and what is the dominant um, how what about relationships at this time. So during breakdown and release one could say there is chaos. Uh, actors are not well connected with each other, there is like a, a chaotic situation on what is happening and then slowly only through bake through there are first pattern of relationships so species or actors who interact with each other on uh, a more frequent basis and hence a new pattern is emerging. And then slowly when it comes to growth and stability we can say that these relationships become mutually sustaining so um, <clears throat> these relationships strengthen in a way they're like um, species are only exchanging with each other anymore or in economies certain players have formed supplier uh, customer relationships so there becomes a, a kind of more rigid system which is a bit closer and this process normally continues until there are less and less players so over the time there are less and less relationships and when we have reached like the peak of the conservation phase normally we could say there are very little uh, relationships uh, which makes the system also more fragile to the breakdown and all the matter is then like concentrated with a few players like in the forest uh, certain big trees and the inhabitants would occupy all the, the carbon dioxide and all the matter which is there in the forest and hence not allow any other species to come up for example. Um, so how long does this cycle take now? So this adaptive cycle can be happening in any kind of scale. So we talk when it comes to geological or biological evolution, we talk about millions of years when it comes, for example, to industry or, or skills uh, which humans have, we can talk about decades in which a shift might happen. And then when it comes to human relationships or even conversation, it can be as short as a second or a month, for example, for, for such a change to really happen. 
And it is this duration which is also the baseline of this illusion of linearity. So if something is a very long cycle, which uh, from our viewpoint, like in the symbol here, might look like a linear uh, part of life, so nothing has been changing maybe since we were born, we have seen it always in that way. So to us in our perception, it might seem like a linear pattern, and it might at the moment be a linear pattern because a process which, which takes... Uh, centuries or even millennia or, or millions of years to happen might be the same 50 years ago as it is now. But it's in the end, eventually, all this is, it's always a part of a cycle, just the cycle will be really long. So if the patterns are stable and if the cycle takes long enough, so if we know, okay, this cycle is still uh, going to happen for a very long time, well, it's worthwhile making a causal loop diagram and looking into what are the patterns and how is it systemically related, something I'm talking about in a different video. Um, yet, if it's a very short cycle, if it's something where you know change will happen very fast, um, well, we should not uh, fall under the trap of that it's linear. As well as we should always be prepared that we never know it's one of the uncertainty things of complexity that we never know when a breakdown might happen, how it will be induced, and hence be ready to say, okay, patterns can just be another way. So let's talk a bit about the locked-in situation. A locked-in can happen at the end of the conservation phase, and uh, there are like three um, basic characteristics or three things which shape how the lock-in looks like. It can be or and which actors or species are still there in a lock-in. So one is maybe a question of who's best adapted, but it's also a question about the chance of variations happening. So this is a bit the luck element. And then last but not least, and complexity science is very, uh, very dedicated about this or very um, emphasizes a lot about the sequence of events. So uh, when did what happen? When did which rabbit eat? Which tree? Uh, so this makes a huge difference on who is happening, who is, who is surviving, or who is the dominant species, or are the dominant actors in the end. And if a situation is in lock-in, it means it's, it's, very, it's not resilient to any shock or change, because there are so little players and there is so little variation like what makes a system normally resilient, I'll talk about this in a different video, is the number of players and the number of variations, how the relationships could happen. So because in a locked-in situation there are very little players, it's not very resilient to shock or changes. Um, it's defined by less diversity, so there are way fewer options. So think, for example, about um, a monoculture wheat field um, where maybe any animal would find very little option in, in eating. But also think about our financial sector with huge, huge investment companies such as BlackRock controlling amounts of money which are much bigger than uh, than national uh, budgets. <laughs> and Or think about the software industries where Microsoft is basically locked in to be the main supplier of software. So these systems are, uh, as per, per complexity thinking, normally resistant to subtle shifts. There can be a situation of what system thinking is calling unfreezing, uh, which has uh, happened, for example, with the introduction of the internet, uh, where the communication system, which seemed unfreeze, which seems locked in, has been really changing. But normally, uh, that's the conclusion, change would require fracturing or deconstructing of the old system. In comparison to, for example, change in an early phase of the adaptive cycle, some nudging or some very subtle shifts could bring about change. So let's have a look at one example from the book of Sheen Bolton et al, uh, Embracing Complexity, on which uh, much of this presentation is actually based, um, who are writing, we might actually argue that the global finance system is locked in. There are increasingly few players, and those players at large with a powerful ability to lobby government. The dominant players are able to establish ways of working that suit their interests. The, si the situation will be resistant to subtle influence or innovative attempts. They further write, it may require very strong and powerful interventions. Indeed, it may be almost impossible to change and may eventually just collapse, either as a result of the unforeseen runaway consequences of particular financial instruments or behaviors, or as a consequence of broad changes to the environment, such as big shifts in demography, 
or a drastic fall in the confidence of customers in the economic system or through shocks due to climate change, war, disease, and I would like to end a pandemic here. Um, so they assume that, maybe, for example, the change in the financial system would only come about with a fracturing and deconstructing rather than with adapting and nudging. I hope you have enjoyed this little presentation about what is the adaptive cycle, what does mean locked in. Um, and if you like my series, please follow me on my channel. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to see you again in another video.